Hey guys, I'm back. And uh, today's video is like three birds with one stone. Actually, I lied. It's four birds with one stone. But all of those birds will be knocked gloriously from the sky by this Lansky Williamson designed Mad Rock and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I, I apologize for the humidity. The camera lens might fog up a little bit as we go about this video. I'll try to keep it as clear as possible. Before we get into this, let's do our shout outs for this video. <clears throat> so the names today, top six on our list. We've got Lemon Sucker. Now Lemon Sucker, uh, some people don't believe him, but look, uh, I'm straight and honest with you guys. I expect you're not gonna lie to me. Lemon Sucker is starting his own channel. He says he's trying to raise money. Uh, his sister is blind and he's trying to raise money for some medical stuff. And that's what he says his channel is for. So, okay, I have no reason to think he's lying. So. Lemon Sucker, check out his channel, see? The next one is Blue Collar Survival. Blue Collar Survival also has a new channel, Discord Gaming 67. I love this name just because it's fun to say. CRI Swiggle Mouth. Javier Geraldo. And I know I am gonna screw this up, dude, and I apologize, but T Pucks Acid X. And yeah, I'm going to, again, all these names will be down in the video description. So I will spell it exactly as it is spelled, as his, as his YouTube username is spelled. But I, he, he gave me a little primer on how to pronounce it, and I think I got it right, but I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, as always, guys, uh, watch the channel, comment on videos, participate in discussions, you ask for shout outs, and I'm, I'm happy to give you one to thank you. So let's move into this video. Lansky is a great name in sharpening systems, and I've talked many times about the Lansky sharpening system. I use it a lot. I use both their diamond system and their whetstone system. They've got just a lot of great options. Uh, and it was a user request to look at a Lansky knife or two. So there's number one. Here is a Lansky knife. Number two, I've been talking to a lot of folks out in the UK and they've got some, what are in my opinion, insane knife laws out there. So this was just sort of as I was looking through, I noticed that this is a, what they call world legal, God, I can't talk today, world legal slip joint. And it's legal in 156 countries. And I'm pretty sure, you know, this tells you to contact the government for most recent regulations. But from what I can tell looking it up, this actually would satisfy the UK crazy ass knife requirements. So I've had several folks watching the channel ask me if I had any recommendations for a UK legal EDC knife. So this, I'm not saying I recommend this one up front, but I'm saying, hey, I finally found one that fits all the rules, right? So there's number two. Number three, this is uh, sort of marketed at, as a kind of rescue first responders knife. So this is, even though I didn't mention it when I did the Gerber Hinderer rescue knife unboxing as part of our sort of rescue knife lineup, we're gonna add this one in as a potential first responder rescue knife. We'll take a look at what it can uh, offer us there. And finally, I, I just, I always get requests for kind of more affordable knives, do reviews, do unboxings. And this is a very affordable knife. Adding on to all that, Michael Williamson is a great knife designer. Uh, his actual custom stuff can sell for thousands of dollars. I like some companies will team up with the big names in knife making and kind of get their designs in a more affordable package that a lot of people can own. So starting, you know, we'll just get right into it. Um, looking at the packaging, um, Lansky is a US based company, but you see there the knife is made in China, so it won't automatically hold it against them though. You can see right up front, it's got a hawk bill design, which as a, you know, rescue knife, I, I see could be kind of useful as we talked about with the Gerber getting, getting up under some clothing or under a seatbelt or something. I found this behind my bed as I was cleaning. Uh, God, I have a video for this and I'll put the video link in the description where I took a Spyderco military and just did a lot of customizing on it because I could. I gave it an Emerson Wave feature, so for pocket opening and I duracoated the whole thing and did a little grinding on the handle. And anyway, if you want to see the process of making this thing, uh, the video's on there. So my first impression's right off the bat. And yeah, it's a little negative. I feel like the handle's very small for my hand. If you have smaller hands, I guess it's great. The clip also appears to be very small. Now I'm not saying it's not gonna do a good job, but just from right up front, that looks like a, a, just a small little hand, a clip. Uh, 
I would like a larger handle, something that I feel like I can get a better grip on and something that extends down just a little bit more than that. Now, feature wise, well, it doesn't have any. It has a blade. So to kind of put this on the block as, as a rescue knife kind of tool, I guess you could say because it's got a hawkbill blade, I mean, maybe, but no glass breaker, no seatbelt or line cutter, no, no anything besides the blade. So they made it orange. Cool. Yay. It goes with the rant I was talking about last time where, you know, a rifle with a black stock doesn't make it an assault rifle because it's black plastic instead of wood grain, you know? Um, for, for the design, though, the design itself I could see is comfortable. It's just the size I think is off. You've got plastic handle with, I think you can see steel inset liners there. And you've got like kind of a rubbery, grippy coating, the orange inlays over there, so that's nice. Clip is reversible for right or left hand, but it is tip up only. There is no choice for tip up or tip down. But you've got this nice metal spine textured to give you just a little bit more grip. And then the jimping up there on the spine of the blade actually is pretty effective. Uh, this jimping doesn't do much, you barely feel it, but here feels pretty good. And then I feel like if I wanted to, I could use the rest of the spine to get really fine control of the tip of this blade if I needed to. Being a slip joint, it's very stiff, incredibly stiff knife. Wow. I mean, I guess it's legal because it doesn't lock, but I guess it is legal in a lot of places because it doesn't lock, but the stiffness on that blade, wow, yeah. And just to be very nitpicky, if you take a look inside there, quality of the craftsmanship in there leaves a little bit to be desired. You can see what I'm talking about there. Uh, whether it's plasma cut or water jet, I'd be the first one to admit I'm not as smart as I should be on either of those processes, so I'm not sure what that is indicative of, but not the cleanest it could be, but I guess right there doesn't need to be either. I'd love thumb a stud for opening this thing a little bit easier, but you got your little nail cut out. It is seriously, it is tough to open this blade up. But the finish is nice. And you've got kind of the stonewash finish. And you've got your satin finish. And uh, it looks nice. Oh, it is a lightweight. Boy, I'm gonna have to work that in. Seems to come pretty finely honed and it's it's humid out here, so the paper is, you know, a little harder to cut than a nice dry rigid piece of paper, but this is making nice clean cuts straight through it. If you did need to use this to get up under, I feel like the Hawkbill is good for sliding up underneath lines, seatbelts, and clothes, but I still, in an emergency situation where everybody's moving very fast and, and kind of blood is pumping and everything, I'd be a little afraid that you might hook somebody's skin right there. Cutting power though, I think the blade design and the, the ratio of handle to blade and the way it all, the weighted and the, it just, it feels good. Like I could imagine just tearing through stuff with this. A two and three quarter inch blade definitely puts it on the legal list in the UK. Having a slip joint makes it legal in the UK. They don't have any laws that I can see that dictates how easily it needs to close. It just can't be a locking blade. The clip, by the way, is deep carry, which I like, so very little of that knife is going to stick up past a belt line or out of a pocket. It certainly is shave worthy. Take a look right there. So paper slicing, great. Shaving, great. To keep this knife around to finish our roundup of all the rescue knives, but I've been talking to someone specifically in the UK back and forth. Uh, I, I won't mention his name and, and until he tells me he can mention his name, but he's been looking for a good street legal knife in the UK. So once we do the video with all the testing and everything, and I don't need this, this is going to be given away to that specific viewer. And I will get in contact with you by a private message because we have a private message going. Um, you know, and, and if he's found one already and doesn't want this, then it will, this will just be lumped into the next big giveaway package for someone else the first Lansky that I'm going to try out. There are others. I have some others on order. They're also Willemson designs. We'll see how those work out. But if you do live in one of those countries where you need a shorter blade, where you need no locking system, 
you'd like a low cost knife, um, you can buy a thumb stud that will clamp onto the blade like right there and I think that would make this a lot more convenient to use. And I'm sure with a little bit of use, this will wear in a little bit and get just slightly easier. But I think quality, I've got a couple little issues, a couple little complaints, but other than that, I think that for the price paid, this is pretty good. This thing before I go, uh, thinking of doing, uh, I'm probably gonna have a 15,000 subscriber, like big giveaway, like I did for 5,000. But in the meantime, uh, just to do some, you know, some, some fun things and do some other small giveaways of some other items I want, this is what I was thinking. Um, I feel like I've gotten the chance to have a lot of cool experiences and done a lot of cool things, in my opinion. I was, a fair amount of you guys liked the story time with Doc idea that I did, talking about how I got into knife collecting. I was going to a series of videos for giveaways where I tell some stories from my life, from my career. Some of them will be true, some of them will not. The whole idea is, it'll be, it'll be a relatively short video where I'll tell the story. You guys comment, is that a real true Doc story or is that a made up story that I, I just invented? Those of you who guessed correctly will then be entered into the giveaway and then we'll choose names from the people that guessed correctly. And we'll do like five or six of these, you know, once a week to give something away. If that sounds like something that is fun, please let me know if that sounds like a fun way to do it. I think another video I need to film right now for two more knives before more rain pours down on us. So as always, I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome and I'll be back again real soon.